right, well, it looks like a nice spider web over here. Let's see if we can't catch this on film. Um, we missed it up a little bit. You know, what was invisible now becomes visible. Nice. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, yeah, this this one's sitting in, at, in being bathed in about 45 microsieverts per hour, plus or minus, which is pretty darn radioactive. In 1986, an explosion and fire at the nuclear reactor in what was then the Soviet Union in Chernobyl, Ukraine launched a plume of radioactive fallout that rendered a large swath of the region here uninhabitable. Since then, the creation of a thousand square mile exclusion zone prohibiting human activity has led some to declare the area a restored Eden, brimming with wildlife. But for more than a decade, Timothy Mousseau, an American scientist, has conducted an extensive biological survey here and his studies have shown that life has been far more slow to recover than previously believed. So it's a perfect area for biological studies because we see a diversity of, of plants and animals. It's one of the hotter areas uh, in the Chernobyl zone and, and so from our previous work we know that this, this level of, of chronic exposure is above that that most species will tolerate. This year we've been looking at the small rodents, we've been looking at spiders. Earlier this year we were here working with the birds. We found that the abundance of many species of birds are depressed in these areas of high contamination, leading to an overall decrease in the biodiversity on the order of 50% you know, fewer species in hot areas than there should be uh, if, there had, if there wasn't radioactivity in the area. Mousseau says he has seen much higher frequencies of tumors and physical abnormalities, like deformed beaks among birds, compared with those from uncontaminated areas. He has measured declines in populations of insects and spiders. And yet, in a recent paper released last month, Mousseau has also shown that some birds here may actually be adapting to high radiation levels. So these are uh, special digital audio recorders that are designed to pick up the high frequency sounds that bats produce while they're echolocating and flying around and trying to capture insects. And by the frequency of calls, we can get an idea of the abundance of bats. Yeah, look at these mushrooms here. <laughs> Let's see if it goes up. Well, look at that, eh? Uh, oh, 43. So 42, 43. So yeah, this mushroom is definitely much hotter than the surrounding areas. The legacy of Chernobyl, Mousseau says, can be seen not just in animal life. Cut trees here show a dramatic change in the color of their rings, exactly in 1986. It occurred to us uh, after visiting Fukushima uh, last year that some of those spider webs looked a little strange. And, and, and so we thought we would test that hypothesis in a very scientific way by, by capturing images of as many spider webs as we, can, as we can find in hot and cold areas of the same kinds of species to see if there's more variability or you know, less, less, less structure to the webs in these radioactive areas. It can serve as a, as a biomarker of the background radiation. We're in the town of Chernobyl, uh, downtown Chernobyl as it were, and what we found is that the frequency of aberrant color patterns on the, on the back sides of these bugs is directly proportional to how radioactive the area is. The one on this side is relatively normal, and then you look on the other one and you see that the black spots are kind of fused together. Thank you. Rousseau's work in Chernobyl will continue for years to come. He's extended his study to Fukushima, Japan, and hopes to shed a brighter light on the lasting effects of radiation on biological systems, including humans.